Hello and welcome back to VMTV Vault. My name's Kyle Diamond. My guest for this episode is Octagon's Vlasto Chepo. Um, he fought a couple of weeks ago with a first round knockout over Gianni Melillo. It's an incredible fight if you haven't seen it. Go watch it back on YouTube, which you can do. And uh, a crazy brawl. Um, Chepo gets the win. Another first round knockout for him on an incredible streak of them at the moment. Um, to potentially set up a, a fight with his rival that he's been um, trying to get for quite some time. Um, but there's also been talks of him having a boxing match before the end of the year so we spoke about that too um, as well as kind of breaking down his performance and uh, his previous career in boxing um, without further ado El Chapo himself Vlasto Chapo um, okay. so I watched your last fight back earlier on today um, and before we get into you know what can potentially come next and all of that good stuff um, the thing that I took away the most is how much you seem to like thrive when fights get chaotic like once once your opponent starts throwing punches with you that kind of yeah. seems to me like where you find the most comfort is that fair to say yeah you know i my every fight is like that i love fighting like uh, this is my style this is my typical style i have 40 fights and 35 fights for is like uh like this with no with ko you know i feel good when i go to the go to the brawling or fighting like this you know and this was my game i i take him to um sorry this is my first time uh to do an interview in english it's absolutely fine mate don't worry about it this is my first time yeah and that was my game plan to fight with him, you know, because he was a black belt judo. He was good, good at the ground. I know that he is also good striker, but I believe in myself that I'm better striker, and I have, I have hard, hard punches than him, and uh, and it's that was it. I've I've got to ask as well. Um, your your English is is very good. I think. How did Thank you? you how Yes, yes, but I uh, easier is for me the writing message, you know, because you you can correct or it's, if it's something wrong you can uh, send again. But I don't speak uh, in English from my from my high school, you know. It's uh, seven eight years, then I forgot a little bit. But after time, I will I will be better and better, you know. Yeah. Um. How come? How come you spoke English in your high school? Uh, I don't understand how, uh, how you mean. Like, um, like, why did you why did you learn English? But did, did uh, you say was... we have only two options: English or German. You know, but English is the uh, language when you can speak in the all the all the around world. You know, right? Then I I chose English. Yes. Ah, okay, okay, I got you. Um. When I was watching the the fight back earlier, like I said, um, I think that something happened in that fight that I've never seen happen before, which is when you dropped him and you threw the punch and you threw it so fast that when it went past him, you caught him with the elbow and that's yeah. what dropped him. I don't think I've ever seen that happen in a fight before. Like that. <laughs> yes, I I don't see also because I won't throw to uppercut, you know. Yeah, but he he was lucky man because if I hit him with that uppercut, he will be taller three three centimeters. I I think. <laughs> then I I hit him in the with the elbow and he he goes down. Yeah, but yeah. he tried to take me down. He he has big heart, you know, because after that elbow, he came to the to the, to the takedown and he starts to fight again. I know um, you said uh, right afterwards, whilst you were still in the cage doing your interview, um, that you're kind of not too um, focused on uh, chasing for a fight with Panaz, which is obviously was a big talking point going into this fight. Is that kind of still how you feel? Um, I I don't like this guy, no. Uh, I must have a fight with him because... He loves talking, talking, talking. He is the best. He is the nicest guy in the in the, this planet. And I don't like this. You know, I I don't like trash talk also. But 
I'm not trash, trash talk. I want to talk in the cage, you know, with my with my skills and with my fights. I want to uh, prove the best in the fight, not with my mouth, you know. And this is very important for me. But this guy, this, I hate him, you know. I must have a fight with him because two times, I think, two or three times this fight was uh, cancelled, you know, and everybody takes him like the best stand-up fighter in the Czech Republic and Slovakia. He was in the glory and yes, he is he is really good fighter, but I, I believe in myself and I know that I can knock him down, you know. Mm -hmm. Did it add um, any extra pressure going into the fight with Malilo? Because a, a lot of the 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 talking points beforehand were about how he had gone to a decision with yeah. Benaz, and so you wanted to try and do it faster. Did that add more pressure onto the fight because you came out fast? Uh, yes, but uh, the pressure is same every time for me, you know, because every fight is for me the uh, how how I say every fight for me is very important, you know. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter if it's first fight in pro or tenth fight in pro. And this fight was also very important, and the pressure was on me because I I want to win. I don't don't want to lose, but not not uh, not for Peñas uh, because I uh, how I say I'm only watching on myself, you know. Mm -hmm. And pressure was, but like normally, mm -hmm. and. The plan wasn't to knock him down in the first round. I was ready to fighting with him three rounds. But I know when I ha when I hit some someone, it's over. You know, mm -hmm. when I hit clearly, it's over. Um, I, I think a lot of people would have expected. Then I know that Panaz is fighting um in in a couple of weeks. So a lot of people would have seen that uh, as being maybe the next time we would see you in there but i know there've also been rumors of you competing in boxing as well um hopefully before the end of the year um you've had professional boxing fights before right yes i have i have 12 amateur fight box fighting fights and uh seven pro yeah mm -hmm. Is that something you you still want to? Obviously, uh, the, the rumors are there, so that so I know that there is interest on, on your behalf of of competing in boxing whilst competing in MMA. But do, do you see yourself able to to do both at the same time? No, uh, only this is a this is something special in octagon when they do some boxing fights, and I I will like to fighting in box in the octagon, but I can't uh, do two things uh, together, you know. If I do MMA, uh, I focus 100% only for MMA. I finish with box before three years, I go to MMA, then this is this is for me important, MMA, not boxing. Mm -hmm. But if I, if I have a, a opportunity like, like, like now in Octagon, I will take this fight because it's interesting for the people. The MMA, MMA fighters can can a boxing fight you know and it's interesting for the people yeah maybe yeah. i will have maybe i will fighting with apollo silva now 30 december mm. that's that's the thing that i kept seeing about which um i, I think is really cool that you like you said you've got the opportunity with octagon to, to compete in mma yeah. and then and then do this as well because like you said it would be very difficult to do them both at the same time but the opportunity to kind of uh do this as like a like a one-off little break to cap off the year um that must be that must be cool for you because like you said you had to kind of leave boxing behind so to get to to get to do it um without having to dedicate you know the whole year to it um that must be cool to do oh uh, sorry you must ask him one more time because i don't hear you that's no problem. Um, I, I was just saying about how um, I, I think it's really cool that with Octagon, you have the opportunity to where you can do this as like a one off. And it means you don't have to leave boxing completely behind, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, do you think that, that this would be a, a, a total one off depending on how it goes and, and, 
obviously uh, assuming the fight gets made and everything do do you think you could see yourself maybe dipping your toes in every now and then or or is this literally just a just a one off just to return to boxing and then kind of close that door oh man this is very very difficult difficult question for me <laughs> right she okay um okay is there another way uh, I'm just trying to think yeah. how I can rephrase it. Can we uh, cut this interview or? Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, no problem. Don't worry about it. Um, how ex are you excited to get back into to boxing for this, for yes, this yes. fight that's going to happen? Yes, because the box I love the most of the of the all martial arts. Box is my I love boxing. Uh, I uh, fuck. I like boxing much, like MMA. But I must finish with box because I have problems with my boxing promoter, bo boxing matchmaker. You know, then I I I don't have another another option. Then after that, I must go to MMA. You know, because my boxing matchmaker or boxing promoter uh, was bad guy. You know, and he he fucked me up. Fucked. Fuck me up with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, how do you say, with contract, you know, mm -hmm. with con then I don't have another option and I go to MMA, but boxing is my number one. I love boxing. Yeah. Then I was, I, I am very excited to boxing again in the octagon. If, if I right. had, if I had that, that opportunity. Yeah. That's, um, that must be great then to to get this opportunity with a promotion like Octagon, because yeah. you know th this wouldn't be something most companies would put on the table. You know, uh, an MMA company like Octagon to offer you this chance to box. Um, which uh, it sounds like you didn't wanna you didn't want to leave boxing, right? Yes, yes, uh, of course, because I have very great, uh, very great start career. You know, I I win six fights, six KOs in the first round. I became the light heavyweight champion of Slovakia. Then, then, the, then that guy, my promoter or matchmaker, uh, he he see only money and he started the fight up with me. You know, with with the money and with the fights and i must leave boxing because i have i have contract uh to fight within six years i think mm -hmm. and i right. finish yeah i don't have any 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 opportunity well i i'm i'm so glad that you're gonna get the chance to to box again um and that it you know can go alongside all of the stuff you're doing in mma because some of the fights have been incredible to watch man so thank you for that um thank you. so good luck for the boxing match thank you nice. so much for your time and thank you for um persevering with with all the with the difficulties and stuff like that your english is very good i have to tell you <laughs> sorry sorry for my english no it's uh, no problem at all thank you Thank you very much for the interview. I I appreciate it. And next time will it will be better, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Thank you so much, man. And uh, we'll catch back up with you at some point. Thank you very much. Cool. Have yeah. a good day. Thank you for checking out this episode of VMTV Vaults and myself and, of course, Vlasto Chapo again. Go check out his previous fight in Octagon. You can go check that out over on their YouTube channel. And uh, stay tuned for hopefully some exciting news about his next outing before the end of the year. Hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode of VMTV Vaults or the Verbal Money podcast. And we'll catch you on the next one in a bit. Mm -hmm.